A huge, huge warm welcome to you all this morning. The first thing that I'd like to do is acknowledge that we're holding our event on the land, the traditional lands of the Wartharong people of the Kulin Nations. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and future. Thanks, Cathy. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Geelong. Um, it's fantastic to see so many have made it. Um, some of you coming quite long distances, traveling for days, possibly even, um, and that you've found our, our sleepy hollow in Geelong. Um, it's fantastic. A huge warm welcome to you all. <clears throat> so, how did we get here, David? So, Linux ConfEU has a long history. It started back in 1999 in Kalu in Melbourne. Do we have anybody from Kalu in Melbourne in the audience? Could you please stand up? Stand up. Stand up. We're not I, I, I know, you, okay. I'm very sorry. The team didn't want me to do this either, but I think it looks awesome and I want so to do it anyway. And <laughs> from we 1999, have, we have you to thank you for this. Thank you. <laughs> from 1999 in Melbourne, it then moved to Sydney in 2001. Do we have any people who are in Sydney in 2001? Yep, up you come. This is your morning exercise. There won't be any more of this, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if you have been consecutive years, you can remain standing if that makes it easier yeah. for you. <laughs> um, 2002, we then moved on to Brisbane. Any Brisbaneites? Brisbane people in the house. <laughs> 2003, over to Perth. Straight over. Great stuff. Getting a few more now, that's nice to see. 2004, went to Adelaide. Adelaide, great showing, good stuff. Oh, wow. Canberra in 2005. Wow. Definitely getting a few more now. Dunedin, the first time that LCA went over the ditch. All the New Zealanders. 2007, Sydney again. Oh, all the Sydney ciders. Fantastic, look at them all, yeah. fantastic. And then back to Melbourne again for 2008. Well done, Donna. 2009, Hobart. Oh, all the Taswegians, Ooh, Lots of Melbourne see. stayed on for Hobart as well. 2010, <laughs> back to New Zealand again. <laughs> <laughs> All the New Zealanders in the house. 2011 in Brisbane. Floods, we don't know anything about that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to mimic, it didn't work. <laughs> 2012, Ballarat, Under the Stars. Fantastic. I think this was about the point that Kathy and I went, you know what, if Ballarat can do it, <laughs> who do Ballarat think they are? <laughs> 2013, Canberra. Back to Canberra. <laughs> 2014, back to Perth. Oh, fantastic. Lots of people now. Oh, my goodness gracious. And last year in Auckland, 2015. Well done, Shereen And what a fantastic job they did there. And is there anybody in the house who is coming to LCA for the very first time in Geelong? A huge warm welcome. Welcome. <clears throat> so we've put together an amazing conference program for you over the next five days. We have over 70 speakers, standouts in their field, and a huge thank you to Papers Committee for your excellent advice and guidance. We have 11 mini conferences, special interest groups, incredible, incredibly well put together by our mini conf, mini -conf organisers. You've all done a splendid job. We are doing lightning talks on Friday. There's an email, I won't cover it now. If you're overwhelmed by the schedule, we are running five parallel tracks. It's a big conference. If the schedule overwhelms you, keep left. We've scheduled the talks that we think will be most popular on the left of the schedule. If in doubt, keep left, or... And of course, there's always the hallway track. There'll always be people out in the hall, in the courtyard, in the foyer, working on cool projects. Go meet new people. 
um, sign up for a whole bunch of projects that you intend to do over the next 12 months until the next LCA, and then get to the next LCA and realize you've done none of them. <laughs> um, and there's, of course, boffs as well. Um, so birds of the feather sessions. So send an email out to the chat list if you'd like to um, meet up with some like-minded people and discuss what interests you. Wi-Fi. We understand your needs. Evil Steve understands your needs. <laughs> we have Wi-Fi. The SSID is Linux ConfAU, and the pre-shade key is LCA by the bay, all lowercase. It's available at the Waterfront campus, it's available at the Warm Ponds campus, and it will soon be available at the Wool Museum. Um, we're just waiting on a contact at the City Greater Geelong Council to light up some fibre for us across the road, and then there will be Wi-Fi there as well. All of the fibre. Housekeeping, yes, this is the part that we have to tell you. So due to dollar things, we've had a slight room change. D2212 is no longer on the schedule. All of the events that were in 212 have now been moved to D2194 Little Percy. Um, it has been updated everywhere in all of the places, but just make sure that particularly if you're going to the documentation mini-conf, there has been a room change. No smoking, none of the tobacco. Deakin is a completely smoke-free campus. The only way if you need to have a cigarette, you have to go off campus to have one. Waterfront and warm ponds. That includes the student residences. Um, we've provided you a sunscreen. It's important that you wear it. We don't want you sunburnt. You don't want you sunburnt. Put sunscreen on. If you run out and you need some more, RegoDesk can help. Personal hygiene. It's upsetting this has to be on there, but please wash your hands. We've provided you a hand sanitizer as well. You'll be meeting new people. You'll be shaking hands. You'll be sharing meals. It's important that your hands are clean so you don't all end up ill. Share friends, not bacteria. Yes. <laughs> your lanyards must be worn at all times unless you're giving a presentation. Um, it's important that you wear them at all times and to all events so that we know who you are, we know you're in the right place, um, and, and you know you're in the right place. And in the famous words of Erin Walsh, if you're not wearing your lanyard, we don't know who you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, power. You plus a power board equals new friends. Share the power. Morning and afternoon tea will be served in the inner and outer Costa foyers. That's the areas you've just walked through to come into here. Um, the table with the gold tablecloth is for special dietary requirements. If you enlisted a special dietary requirement, and I didn't clarify that you don't actually need it, um, it is on that table. Um, there will also be um, food items marked as gluten-free or vegetarian as well on the other tables. Um, coffee is available in the outer Costa foyer. Um, there's a coffee cart set up in the corner and in the cafe across the courtyard and down the stairs. Um, those of you who are professionals or speakers who've gotten coffee vouchers from SUSI um, can redeem those there as well. Um, lunch is also available in the courtyard. There's a few food stands set up. It is cash only. Um, there is an ATM in the lift lobby near security just across the courtyard as well um, or from the Waterfront Kitchen Cafe. Buses um, will be shuttling between Warm Ponds and Waterfront campuses from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. Um, every half hour. Um, if you need to read up more about the buses, go to linux.com.au forward slash without forward slash buses. Um, it gives the full timetable there. Um, here's a map of our venue. Um, as already mentioned, note that D2212 is no longer listed. Um, it did get rained out, and that is now D2194, Little Percy. Um, if you need assistance getting around, go to Redro Desk, find someone in an orange shirt, they'll be able to help. So LCA is what it is through the support of an amazing community and also some incredible sponsors. HP, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, again this year, have come to the party and have given us their strongest support. New name, new logo, old friends. Let's hear it for HP. Thanks also to our friends at IBM, Big Blue, um, long-time sponsor. It's fantastic to have them on board again this year. Um, great group of people to work with. They're, they've always been on board um, from the start, seeing what they can do to help out. That's here at 5 a.m. as well. Our King Penguin sponsors. Arnet are doing all of the network, all of the packets, all of the bytes, all of the pipes, all of the fibre. Let's hear it for Arnet.
and also Deakin University for letting me borrow way too many of their staff to help run this conference and for letting us use this fantastic space. Yeah. Thanks also to our Royal Penguin sponsors, Red Hat, uh, local Geelong company Codacious and Catalyst. Um, they've been fantastic to work with. They're all a great help. It's great to have them on board. Let's hear it for them. And our Adeli Penguin sponsors, Elastic, who are one of our first sponsors to sign up, Optiva and Google. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about Optiva in a little bit with the diversity program they helped with as well. Huge. Let's hear it for our Adeli sponsors. <laughs> and of course, our Fairy Penguin sponsors, GME, another Geelong local, Duxtel, uh, Bow and Tess and Tag, another Geelong local, and Rimu Hosting. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have an official conference mobile app. It is made by Codacious locally in Geelong who are looking for iOS developers. It is available for Android. It's in the Google Play Store. If you don't do the Google Play, we have the APK and it's available for iOS. BlackBerry users, we're sorry. Not, <laughs> Not sorry. sorry. <laughs> Cameron, if you're in the room as well, we're also sorry. Not available for Windows Mobile. Oh. You'll get a real phone one day, don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, we'd really like to say thank you for Codacious for doing this for us. They've done it gratis. Um, I know it's not open source, but they're doing it for an open source conference to support us. Um, they do believe in open source. It's just... Things. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it for Codacious. Yeah, thanks, Codacious. <laughs> um, I'd also like to talk about the Optiva diversity program. Um, so Chris from Optiva contacted me and said, so this diversity program, how can we help out? Um, and through their funding, we've been able to fully fund three delegates, flights, accommodation, and a conference ticket from Germany, New Zealand, and Adelaide. Um, we've also been able to set up a childcare center on campus um, with three fully qualified childcare workers, toys, games, coloring books, pencils. Um, that's also fully catered for as well. Um, and they've been a fantastic help providing the funds to make that happen. But uh, uh, no, the delegates can't go in the childcare centre, sorry. <laughs> this is one childcare room, the other one's somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've probably looked at your badges. Um, those of you who knew might not realise what all the symbols mean. Um, so the, the Wi-Fi symbol there is for those of you who are professional delegates and able to go to the professional delegates networking session on Tuesday. Um, this is also open to speakers. Um, the dinner plate with cutlery is for the penguin dinner. Um, it will have a number there for the number of tickets you've purchased. Um, if that number isn't correct based on what you've purchased, please go see Rego. Um, and those of you with a microphone are speakers um, and are welcome to the speaker's dinner on Thursday evening. Um, the 18 symbol means that you've identified yourself as being over 18 and that will just help the people at our venues know um, whether or not they're able to serve you alcohol. Um, if you do look under 25, you will probably still be asked for ID though. So, in our professional delegates, who likes beer? We're a bit worried about that, weren't we? <laughs> the professional delegates networking session will be held at a brewery. It's being held at Little Creatures Brewery, which is a fantastic little brewery in South Geelong. Uh, it's on Tuesday night. And we're also going to be inviting some very special guests from around the ICT uh, Geelong community. We're going to have representatives there from uh, some of the ICT companies and ICT industry groups. Geelong is transitioning from a major manufacturing city into an information economy. We think we've got a lot to offer and we'd like to do a little bit of cross-pollination. So we're running buses as well? Yes, we'll be running buses from the Waterfront campus just outside um, to the PDNS venue at 5.30, 6.30 and 7. Um, the earlier you get there, the more you can eat and drink. Um, and returning from the PDNS to Waterfront and Warm Ponds campuses at 10pm and 10.30pm. So Penguin Dinner, our main conference dinner. Gosh, do we have a treat for you. Penguin Dinner is going to be on Wednesday night. It will be held at the pier. You will have 300 degree views of Corio Bay and some fine dining, a perfect opportunity to catch up with old friends, make new friends, and to really, really enjoy the conference. So Penguin Dinner, Wednesday night at the pier. It's walking distance from here, and we'll also be running buses back. 
Yep. Um, so buses will run from the waterfront campus to Warm Ponds at 10 and 10.30 p.m. Um, there will also be the usual shuttles that are running from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. running during that time if you need to get back earlier. Speaker's dinner. As a token of huge appreciation and thank you to our fabulous speakers, we're going to take them, take you to Truffle Duck at Balmoral. It's an old 1800s homestead and we're going to treat you to a night of fine dining, classical music and beautiful bay views. So uh, if you're a speaker, that's Thursday night. And if you're not a speaker, well, this is what you might have to look forward to in the future. Um, again, we'll be running buses from Waterfront Campus uh, to the dinner at 5.30 and 6 p.m. and then returning from the dinner to Waterfront and Warm Ponds Campus at 10 and 10.30. So we have some fabulous keynotes lined up for you as well. I can't tell you how delighted we are to be able to bring speakers of this calibre to LCA, to Geelong. Tomorrow, the Chair of Internet Australia and recently appointed Deputy Chancellor of Federation University, Mr George Fong, will keynote. On Wednesday, founder of the Open Hardware Foundation, because I know we've got some Open Hardware fans in the audience, Ms. Katerina Mota will, uh, will keynote. And then Thursday, Mr. John O'Bacon, who a lot of you will know from uh, Canonical, and more recently GitHub, will, uh, will keynote, followed by Australia's own Genevieve Bell, Senior VP at Intel on Friday. What an amazing lineup of keynotes. We're going to do keynote questions a little differently this year. If you'd like to ask a keynote question, either beforehand or during the talk, you need to send an email, yes, I know, email, all of the protocol, to keynote at lcabythebay.org.au. The questions will be curated, the good questions will get asked, the poorer ones won't. That simple. We won't be reading any CVs out. Sorry. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Um, the keynotes will be in here at 9 a.m. Um, there will be spot prizes given away beforehand, so make sure you're on time. We have some awesome things to give away. All of the social media. So we're running the Linux ConfAU account. We'll be tweeting from that account. We are on the hashtag LCA2016. There's another slightly different event that's also running on the same hashtag. You may just want to check your filters. That's all I'll say on that one. <laughs> We're on Facebook. If you're at the wrong conference, you know, we'll take care of that later. We're on Facebook, we're on Google, we're on the IRC, hash LCA 2016. Please engage, it's a great way to meet new people. Um, I'd now like to welcome on stage uh, Joshua Hesketh, El Presidente of Linux Australia, to say a few words. El Presidente. Thank you very much. What a pleasure it is to be here in the beautiful Geelong. It's absolutely wonderful to see everyone turn up for another great week. And those who are here for the first time, you're in for a treat. Uh, so Linux Australia is the governing body for LCA, which means we do all the boring kind of admin work. So the treasury and the finance and the reporting and the general stuff like that. Um, but we also do a lot more than just LCA. We run other events. There are WordPress events, Drupal events, Python events, uh, general meetups and bar camps and all these other great things. And we're a 100% volunteer-based organisation. So that's both the council and also the people running those events. That includes David and Cathy and all the other people you see in orange shirts here this week. If you're interested in being involved in an event or anything like that, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to the council or reach out to other organisers and become more engaged in the community. Uh, as an organisation and a community, we uphold five values. Open technology is the first one, and that encompasses open source, open data, open access, uh, open government, and those types of um, concepts. So that's our, our first and foremost value. Uh, community is imp our second value. We value fostering and building communities around open technologies. Freedom is essential in both freedom of expression and freedom of choice, which is you know, a key part of open source. And the last two, respect and diversity, are closely linked. We respect everyone, 
who is part of our community and greater than that, and of course of all backgrounds and diversity as well. So if any of these sound of interest to you, if you feel like you can relate to our organisation and you're not a member, I'd, I'd like to encourage you to go to linux.org.au and become a member. It is free. We are holding our annual general meeting this evening at 6pm in Percy Baxter. If you can come along and you're a member, you're welcome to vote or you're welcome to come along and just observe if you're not a member. Uh, but otherwise, uh, feel free to find me. Happy to talk to anyone about anything. And I'm looking forward to a great week with the, that these guys have put on for us. And I know it's going to be fantastic. So thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. Uh, the conference does have a code of conduct. Um, you've all read it, you've all ticked that you agree to our terms and conditions and the code of conduct. It boils down to one thing, be awesome to each other. Mm. Um, look out for each other during the week. If you experience or witness a code of conduct violation, grab an organiser or a volunteer wearing the orange shirts or a council member. Um, if you can't find someone who's a council member, grab someone in an orange shirt, they'll help you find them. Um, or you can call the on-call number, which is on the screen now. I'm absolutely delighted this year to let you know that our charity partner is Give Where You Live. Give Where You Live has a long and strong tradition in Geelong in addressing disadvantage, and I'd like to welcome Mr Lee Johnston to the stage to say a few words about Give Where You Live. Please make Lee welcome. Thanks so much, Lee. Thanks. Don't you love it when someone gets up with one piece of paper to guest speak? I do want to say greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Live long and prosper. People down the front will see I've got sticky tape holding the fingers in place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome to our fair city. Um, had you come two weeks ago, you would have been sweltering 41 degree heat. Had you come last week, you'd be swimming 41 mils of rainfall. So hopefully this week we were able to give you something in the middle between those two extremes. And I'm pretty sure, looking at the forecast, we're heading that way. It's a city with challenges, not just um, weather-wise, but also through other things that are happening through our, our world. Sorry, I'll just get this sorted. David alluded, uh, and Cathy alluded to the fact that um, we are a, a city in change. The, we started as a, a port for the wool and weed industry through the Western Districts. We then became a, very much a manufacturing and production um, city with our uh, motor works Ford and uh, Elco and International Harvester, etc. And uh, we've read the headlines. We know that things are a little bit different now these days. The manufacturing um, demographic has changed. Um, but there's something special about this city and, this, and what's special is resilience. We are seeing new businesses emerge. We've got the National Disability Insurance Agency and the Transport Accident, uh, Accident Commission just around the corner here behind us. We've got work cover coming down. We've got the Australian Bureau of Statistics setting up an office. So there are things happening, but also there's things happening in the world of IT. We're getting carbon fibre happening out at the other campus of, of Warren Ponds and various other technologies. And above all, this is the willingness of this, commu of this community to look after its own. Mm. Uh, and nowhere is that more evident than its support of uh, Give Where You Live, the Give Where You Live Foundation. It's people in Geelong looking after people in Geelong. People may not recognise that name because we're a standalone organisation. However, we, four years ago, were part of the United Way Network globally. I know there's delegates here from uh, America, Canada. I've got a good friend, Don Oliver, Oliver, who runs United Way New Zealand. So United Way is a community chess model, and so are we. And we're building um, opportunities to improve outcomes for people in Geelong. An example of that, we, um, people love stats, so here's a stat. Our population is approximately 1% of Australia's population. We have about 250,000 people living around here. Workplace giving is one key part of how we raise funds. In Australia, around about $25 million is raised annually through workplace giving. Give Where You Live raises about a million dollars of that. So that's about 4%. So we've got a, 
a city which has 1% of the population and yet it still manages to raise 4% of the national figure for workplace giving. That's a bit of an indication as to how Geelong looks after itself. Every year I send people around to workplaces with these pledge forms that people fill out and they sign up for a couple of dollars a week. I call this the weapon of mass deduction and it works. <laughs> One of the risks of being involved with uh, my organisation is that uh, I tend to reflect on things. Last week out, I was, I was out paying a fortune on school fees, school books, uniforms, all the stuff to set up my son for year nine at high school. Um, last night I went to bed under a roof. This morning I got up out of a warm bed, I had breakfast. That's not the reality for a lot of people in our community. On any given night, there's 580 people who are homeless in our region, in our town, I should say. Um, lots of other things. There's kids going to school hungry. There's kids who, or families under stress being able to put food on the table and being able to cover the costs of just getting their kids through education. But we're not just about giving out money. We give out money to 60 different organisations at the moment. And they, they, so the funds that are, are generated, especially from things like the, the raffle, I believe it's, Cathy, yes. David? Yep. We, um, that money will definitely go towards supporting those very important causes. Um, we have uh, also, apart from just giving out money, we are involved in key strategies which help develop um, long-term outcomes. So looking at dis uh, entrenched disadvantage where people who have generational unemployment, generational poverty. We know there's a big stress on families now with uh, Alcoa closing and Ford closing down in October about being able to put food on the table. So we're coordinating the emergency food relief program for the Geelong region. So I'm here to assure you that uh, when you cough up those uh, few dollars for your raffle tickets, that that money is definitely going to, to make a difference. And I can certainly say, well, what a great legacy for the Linux conference to leave behind um, this sort of legacy to, uh, to this city. So I thank you in advance for that. And the reality is that um, the people who you'll help, because you're, most of you aren't from here, you won't know those people. And I relate it to, it's like giving blood. You know it's going to help, you know it's going to be a good thing. You don't know who it's going to help, but you know that you're going to be helping somebody. And very much so with the donations that we receive go to people who the donors don't necessarily know. So on behalf of the Geelong community, thank you. Thank you to those who nominated Give Where You Live. I'm sure Cathy and David may have had something to do. Thank you, Cathy. Cathy's got a big nod there and a smile on her face. Um, so make the most of your time here in this town. It's a fantastic town. Get out and uh, enjoy what you, we have to offer. If you were here yesterday, you would have seen the cycling event whipping through town. Lots of exciting things happening around here. Um, but on behalf of not only Give Where You Live Foundation, but also the people in the community, I do thank you for your support. And dig deep when those raffle tickets go on sale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. An absolute privilege. Thank you. A huge thank you to Lee. Let's give Lee another round of applause. <laughs> so the big question you probably all have, what's the raffle prize? This year, we're raffling off a Parrot Bebop Sky Controller drone valued at $1,500. Do you I want to really, know what it I really, really didn't want to bring it in. Um, <laughs> it is still in the box, it's still sealed, don't worry, I haven't crashed it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, tickets will be available at Rego from Tuesday morning. Um, they're $2 each or $5 for three. Um, we'll draw the raffle on Friday at the conference closing. Um, if you have flown overseas and you don't think you have baggage allowance, we'll arrange postage to you. Um, we'll also be running a photo competition. Do we have any shutter bugs in the house? Anyone who likes taking photography? <sighs> It's going to be some hot competition. <laughs> um, entries are open Monday through Thursday, um, and the winner will be announced the following morning. So your pictures you take and upload today, and we'll choose a winner tomorrow morning and announce. This um, judging criteria, we won't go through them now. There'll be terms and conditions. Yada, yada, yada. Um, there'll also be a wild card winner um, at the conference close on Friday. So the more you're allowed two pitches per day, um, the more pitches you submit, the more chances you have of winning. Um, 
it's at that, that link up there on the screen as well. Just one more thing about the photo competition in the Code of Conduct, just to make sure if you are taking a photo of someone for the competition and photography in general, just make sure that the people are, are comfortable with you taking a photo. Thank you. Yep. And the prizes for the photo competition are uh, Crumpler $6 million home bags. Again, really tempted to keep them. They're awesome. They're good. Um, we have some spot prizes this morning. Um, for those of you who've been before, you'll know that to win your spot prize, you have to be in the room to claim it. Um, these are thanks to our friends at Duxtel. Um, Mike Everest has kindly donated um, a very large box of, of routers that I had to tell the team they weren't allowed to keep. Um, so thanks to, to Duxtel. So I, I have a list of names here, um, and we'll see if they're here. Do we have Glenn Enright? Is it Glenn Enright Winner. in the house? Woo! Come um, on. Okay. It's, it's lucky dip. Not sure which one's in that bag. You get a right <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Do we have Michelle Halls? Michelle Hall. Michelle, come on down. <laughs> you get a rudder board. <laughs> Congratulations. Do we have uh, Sharif Aloran? Very sorry if I've butchered your name. Yes. <laughs> and Glenn Ogilvie. I think this is the first time I've ever seen this, where the names that are read out are actually in the room. Amazing. Congratulations, Sharif. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Um, so we have plenty more of those to give away throughout the week as well, so make sure you're here in the keynote. Um, we've also got a couple of other things coming up through the week as well. Um, our contact details. If you need to get in contact with someone at the conference urgently, please use the on-call phone. Um, it is manned 24 hours a day. Um, if you have a non-urgent inquiry, uh, please email contact at lcabythebay.org.au or see Rego. Um, Aaron and the team there are really helpful. Maybe not this morning when they're dealing with everyone checking in, um, <laughs> but come back to them certainly or send us an email. Um, if you have an emergency and you need fire, ambulance, or police, please dial triple zero. Um, we have 27% of our delegates, I know because I ran the report in Zookeeper and then swore at Zookeeper. 27% of our delegates this year are international. That is just absolutely phenomenal. So remember, if you're not from Australia, it's triple zero, not 911. Um, and we have first aid available at the Rego desk as well. Um, or grab someone in an orange shirt and um, they'll find the first aiders. And get you sorted. So, that's what we needed to tell you this morning. We're incredibly, incredibly honoured to be able to bring LCA by the bay. We've done a lot of work to make sure that you have a fabulous week and we're absolutely delighted to host you in our home city. Have a fabulous LCA, everyone. Thank you. And morning tea will be served shortly in the Costa Hall foyer. Have a fantastic Monday, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.